Today is a holiday, but really it should be considered fantasy football draft day as a lot of people get together and draft. That being said, today we're going to be looking at 10 sneaky players who might be hiding on your draft cheat sheet right now that you need to pay attention to, look at, and think about as you draft today, trade for players tomorrow, look at waivers in a few days and weeks because you need to know this information. But before we do, hit that subscribe button right now. Stop missing out on this information because you need this information to help build your fantasy team, help win on the waiver wire, help you make those decisions when it counts. And it may not be today, but it might be in week six, somewhere during the middle of the year. One of these videos are going to help you out. Hit that button. Stop missing out. But let's dig in. Let's look at 10 sneaky players. One guy we're looking at here is DeAndre Hopkins. He's now with the Tennessee Titans. Interesting situation here because they like to use Derrick Henry. They like to run the ball. Slower paced offense. Fourth slowest team in pace last year. However, when you think about that, think of DeAndre Hopkins' course of his career because he's had a lot of opportunity with some bad quarterbacks and still produced. He is one of these wide receivers that you get every so often that's just going to be productive at an older age and you're just going to watch him play well until the well runs dry and you're never going to know when that's going to be and it's always going to be later than what you're going to predict and he's going to beat the odds all the time until it happens right now value wise wide receiver 24 and ADP and I think that's very fair I don't think it's over the moon I don't think it's super cheap and I think it's fine though you're getting him borderline wide receiver three price tag because it's on the back end of that wide receiver two spectrum but you're looking at a wide receiver who commands target share last year had a 29% target share and 41% share of the air yards we're going to see that in Tennessee. There's no way he's not going to earn targets. He's DeAndre Hopkins. As long as he's healthy on the field, he's going to get targets. There's also 141 vacated targets here. So we could see some volume go his way. And that's a good thing to see. The big thing to really focus on with his team is a slower-paced offense. However, he's also played on slower-paced offenses and still performed. I look for him to have an okay year, give you some spike weeks, give you some consistency, and at this price tag, where you're at in the draft, I think he's a good get. I think he could give you some upside, depending on what you want, but he's also going in a part of the draft where the wide receiver well starting to run dry. Those top guys are gone. You have some other guys too you can look at, but they are a little cheaper. You may get him and one of those other guys that are in year two of their career or the speculative wide receiver twos, wide receiver ones there that might hit. But also, DeAndre Hopkins has proven to be good. He's proven to be a solid wide receiver throughout his career. And the price tag may be even cheaper in your home league. So this is best ball ADP from underdog because it's pretty steady. And ADP right now and all the other sites really aren't real. Because once you get in your home league draft... Things go off the chain and you see crazy stuff. Literally, players like this who are older and slower-paced offenses tend to fall a little bit in these drafts, so you might catch him cheaper than wide receiver 24. Look for him at a wide receiver 3 price tag. Next, we're looking at Rashad White, RB27 and ADP. I don't think I've talked about him that much because we're focusing on Sean Tucker, which we should not be cutting off our nose to spider face here because he is a talented running back. Catches the ball well out of the backfield. He's explosive, has good athleticism. 12% target share in his last six games last year. Has Baker Mayfield at quarterback right now. Think about Baker Mayfield. He either slings it deep or he checks it down. 23.7% of his targets go to running backs. And a large percent of his targets go deep downfield. It's either feast or famine when it comes to his air yards when he slings that ball. Baker Mayfield likes to target Rashad White. We like Sean Tucker. We do. If this is your first video that you've watched from me, I like Sean Tucker. We like Sean Tucker. We're a family here. But Rashad White's still good in his own right. RB27, good price tag here. RB3 price tag could give you RB2, RB1 value if he's used right, if he hits on some of these matchups. And he's going to be targeted in a passing game. A good guy to target if you're going hero RB, zero RB, depending on when you want to start going running back. Some people, when they go zero RB, they wait running back. They go double-digit rounds. 
Some people, they want to wait a few rounds. It's how you want to play it, how you want to strategize, and also how your league and how your draft is working. But Rashad White's a good candidate if you want to wait on running back a little bit or draft your anchor running back and wait on running back a little bit, however you want to do it. But he catches the ball out of the backfield. That should propel his ceiling a little bit. Next is Bijan Robson, RB3. Not a sneaky player from what I said in the beginning, but a sneaky player, as in a player who could be the best fantasy asset in all of football. And we're getting a lot of questions in the comments, is should I be drafting him in the first three picks of my draft? Should I draft him one overall? The thing about this is I like going Chase. I like going Justin Jefferson. I feel very stable with those players. Christian McCaffrey has proven to be pretty stable with high-end upside. The thing is, though, Bijan Robbins has got some things in his game, and if you want to take that gamble... I'm not going to look at you crazy because I've seen it a ton of times in best ball leagues throughout the summer. I mean, a bunch of times. Drafting every day, you see it happen. So you're not going to be the only one. And I can make a case to why you should because he's going to be used in the passing game. He's also going to get targets deep downfield. He's going to be running a lot of routes. They're going to use him between the tackles. And he's explosive. And he's fun to watch. And he's on an offense that's kind of on the come up. They got a lot of good players here. A lot of young talent here that could step up. And he could be that cog in the machine that really gets things fired up in this offense. He's going to be playing in Atlanta. They're going to have some fun game scripts. When they're losing, he's still going to be on the field. He's still going to be seeing targets. He's still going to be seeing opportunity. So the game script really doesn't matter. If they're ahead, they're going to run him. If they're losing, he's going to be running routes. So this is a good running back to go after. If you like him in the first rounds, ADP says RB3, middle of the back end, around the 110 range, 108 range, somewhere around there. But if you really want him, get your guy. If he's your guy, get him. If there's a guy in the range of ADP that you like, just get your guy. That's probably the main thing I want to say here is if you're in the seventh round, there's a player in that ADP but a little bit later, you like better than the guys are up there, and your gut is saying it, just get your guy. Especially if it's a home league, especially if it's a league with your buddies. Get your guys. Get in your guys, even though if things don't shape out well for you in the season, at least you had fun with your team, and at least you drafted the players you wanted to get, and you built your team with the optimal players or the players you like. Go in and you did your research, you liked them, you watched the highlights, you were like all in on this player. You know what? That's part of football as well. Bijan Robinson has upside. You're not the only person doing it. And we are seeing this guy do some things on the field that not all running backs do. He's considered a generational talent for a reason. Next, Daniel Jones, QB 14 and ADP. 0.57 fantasy points for drop back. Ranks seventh among quarterbacks. We should see more passing volume out of him. Darren Waller might be his wide receiver one. That might ignite the passing game here a little bit. 14th in pass attempts. You're catching him at QB 14 price tag. And he's a little bit mobile. That little bit of mobility gives you a little bit of floor, which helps you from week to week. And he's cheap. You're getting him at a QB 2 price tag where you can really stack up a wide receiver and running back, take shots there too and make gambles, and then get your quarterback on the back end who gives you a little bit of rushing, a little bit of volume in the passing game, and some upside due to game scripts. Could give you some QB1 weeks, and you build up at running back and wide receiver, and then if it doesn't work out, you can stream. So he gives you the flexibility of the waiver wire if things are not looking good. That's what I like about Daniel Jones. He's cheap, and he can be productive. Christian Watson, wide receiver 22 and ADP. Not a lot of people are talking about him, but there's still a lot of people talking about him. What I mean about this is he can be productive, but he's in an offense here that we got to see what it looks like under live fire once we get into week one because of Jordan Love and how this team wants to scheme it too. They may want to slow things down, which means less plays ran, which could impact the offense. However, we know how Watson is played here. 125 air yards a game between weeks 10 and 13. That was when he was hot. That means if this is a slower paced offense, he's going to be running routes downfield. That means if he brings in a couple balls in any given game, you're looking for spike weeks. We saw him get some spike weeks. It happened as a rookie. That could be happening. If the game script 
is looking like it's going to pop off. If the over-under is high, say we're rocking a 50 over-under, you're probably going to want to start Christian Watson to hope for the best. You're going to see him get some deep balls. You're going to see him get challenged downfield. That's what we want in fantasy football. The workload's probably going to be there. The volume of targets from week to week, we're going to have to see how that looks like. But the air yards chasing that at a minimum is going to give you some fantasy production here and there. But we might see some stability as well. A good gamble here, pushing wide receiver three price tag. Low end wide receiver two. Could be a nice get for your fantasy team to round up your wide receiver core on the back end. A guy with some juice, kind of proven a tiny bit on a small sample that can really give you some upside in your flex spot, wide receiver two spot. But really, you should be really strong at wide receiver when you get out of round four and round five because the wide receiver well starts to decrease immensely once you get to the sixth, seventh, eighth round. So make sure you're good at wide receiver early this year. Next, Tyler Lockett, wide receiver 30 and ADP. Again, we're chasing air yards here, and he's going to be getting some target share. Jackson Smith and Jigba starting your hurts. Should be back sooner than later, maybe. I'm no doctor. I don't know, but he's on the field running routes, but he's got that wrap on his hands. We know he's still working through this. We know it's going to take a little bit of time. Lockett averages 77 air yards a game and a 23% target share last year, 30% share of the air yards. The volume's there. The workload's there. You're catching him at a good price tag. Game scripts are going to be huge for him because he's able to pop off on any given week. And if it's a juicy game script, that could be an opportunity of him giving you a 50-point week, 30-point week, 40-point week because he has the potential to do so. If you look at the chart down below, those green candlesticks down there signify his top-end games. The thing about Lockett over these last few years, he's feast or famine. But man, when you got a wide receiver on the back end of your roster who gives you those feast weeks and you plug them in on the right games and you can play the game scripts well, that's going to help you out a lot. That's going to win you some weeks. Probably about five of them, and that's going to be huge. Next is Gerald Everett, tight end 22 and ADP, and we love cheap tight ends. We love playing the market on tight ends throughout the season. We either want to pay up for them or we want to be flexible. And he really creates an environment for you where you can be very flexible at the tight end spots. He could be your tight end too if you really want two tight ends. Or if you're fading the tight end position hard, you're playing the matchups, you want a tight end in a good situation to start the year off, this might be your guy. Tight end 11 in points per game last year. Seven tight end one weeks. Justin Herbert's his quarterback. Justin Herbert will be healthy this year. He played injured last year. Ninth in routes ran, eighth in yards after the catch, fifth in red zone targets. That's what you want out of your tight end. That is what you want. And you're catching him at such a discount. You want Gerald Everett on your team. If he's on waivers and you're playing matchups, this is a guy you're going to be looking at every single week. Next, we're looking at Brandon Cooks, wide receiver 42 and ADP. And he's a guy you're looking at when the well's starting to go dry at wide receiver and things are starting to look suspect at wide receiver. I hope your wide receiver core is already built by the time you get to Brandon Cooks because we're pounding wide receiver early and not forgetting about running backs. That's what we're trying to do, but we're really playing the market and what value comes to us. Brandon Cooks, though, has been good wherever he has been at. He transitions well with all different teams here, with all different types of quarterbacks. Should transition well with the Cowboys. He is older, though, has dealt with injuries recently. Quiet quit on the Texans last year. But Dallas could be more pass-heavy than realized. They did not bring any other running backs of consequence this offseason. Say what you want of Deuce Vaughn, but Tony Pollard's the guy. Something happens to him. Something tells me they're going to be airing it out this year if something happens to Tony Pollard. That's something you want to look at there. Also, they're going to be in game scripts where they're going to have to air it out anyways. Brandon Cooks commands air yards. He also commands target share. CeeDee Lamb's definitely there, going to be doing his thing. Michael Gallup is competition still as he's further removed from that ACL injury. Expect him to do big things. But Cooks is a good player. It's very nuanced. Could be a good get here at wide receiver 42, but also at this price tag, you're also getting some upside because of the downfield ability, and he's cheap. Once you get down in this range, there's really no wrong answers. You don't want roster cloggers 
Or if you do, you want somebody that's at least got some upside. And you can gamble more in this range too. And if it doesn't work out, you got the waiver wire. You want to be in position to be able to hit on the waiver wire. You want to be active on the waiver wire early and often throughout the season. You also want some drags on your team that if they're not firing and there's a guy firing on the waiver wire doing well, just had a good week that you can really make that change. Drop your guy, get that guy off waivers, and keep turning and burning. You don't have to think about the sunk cost involved. You just know that was an upside play. I got another one here on waivers. This guy's firing. This guy's not. Let's make that move. Brandon Cooks is a guy that you could probably do that with. He's going to be stable, though. If you want consistent veterans in the middle of the late rounds, he's a guy that could help you out. That's the thing about him. If you're worried about the rookies, if you need a wide receiver that's stable because you faded the wide receiver position because running backs were coming to you and you had to take the value, could be a guy that could give you some stable production. Maybe a couple pop-off weeks could be doing that. Look at Brandon Cooks. Next, we're looking at Tyler Boyd, wide receiver 52. And this is a wide receiver that's a natural handcuff due to the nature of the position. And he's very talented. I think he'd start for a lot of teams and still be a key component to a lot of teams as well. If something happens to either Chase or Higgins, you're going to get some upside weeks. And he provides a lot of upside weeks off and on throughout his career, even with those guys being healthy. And the thing about him is if something happens to one of those two guys, you got yourself a wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two, because this offense is still going to pump out the volume, still pump out the production. Tyler Boyd can benefit from that. Fun wide receiver to watch out of the slots, easy target for Burrow, and has been dependable throughout his career. Even when all three is on the field, there are some games where he can give you some production because natural circumstance of how explosive this offense is. And Tyler Boyd's still a good wide receiver. Jamison Williams, wide receiver, 56 and 80p. Think about him, elite speed, Will Fuller effect. He's suspended, making him free and cheap. Might be on waivers in a lot of leagues, and you're going to be looking at him. Think Will Fuller, think splash games, think gambles week to week due to game scripts. Think about that. Look at that wide receiver depth chart and think about Jamison Williams being a high-end first-round pick and how they want to use him. Amon Ross St. Brown's always going to be the guy. He's always going to be the dude in this offense. But when we're setting DFS lineups in huge tournaments, we're looking for splash players who are cheap. And those cheap players are usually guys running nine routes downfield, and we're hoping they bring home a catch. You're also doing that with some of these wide receivers off waivers who you got on the back end of your roster who you're gambling with. He's a cheap gamble. And he might be a player you pick up here in the next few weeks. You don't have to draft him. You don't have to draft him because there's plenty of other gambles to gamble with. But there's upside here. There's some nuance here. There's some opportunity here because this offense can move the chains. Fun wide receiver to watch. But those are 10 sneaky players that we're monitoring in our drafts today. Seeing where they fall. Seeing who drafts them. Seeing if they're going to go on waivers. All different strategies with these players. All different outcomes, different ways you can build your team. But make sure you have fun this week. Make sure you have fun drafting those players. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stop missing out on this information because it's really going to make you a better player and help you build those fancy teams. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.